Hello, fourth grade. Today for social studies, we are going to learn about the Dakota Access Pipeline. For our presentation, I will go over what the Dakota Access Pipeline is, the pros and cons, who it affects, and I will share a wonderful picture book with you called We Are Water Protectors. So what is the Dakota Access Pipeline? It is a pipeline that would connect oil wells from Dakota to Illinois. So in the bottom left of our screen, you can see a map. It shows the pipeline beginning in North Dakota, going through South Dakota and Iowa, and ending in Illinois. The pipeline is 1,712 miles long, and it is 30 inches in diameter. You can see that in the top left picture. That is what the pipeline looks like. The pipeline transports 570,000 barrels of oil each day and has the potential to transport over a million barrels of oil. I included two other pictures. The top right picture shows Native American tribes protesting against the pipeline. And I will discuss that in our later slides. The bottom right picture is some of the workers that work on the pipeline and build it. So we are going to discuss both the pros and cons I only included two for each sides of the argument because in your Google form, you are going to share one more pro and one more con that you researched. Let's begin. The first pro is that the pipeline pays millions of dollars in property taxes. These Tax dollars support our schools, hospitals, emergency services, and other community projects. A con of the pipeline is that it travels underneath the Missouri River. This is a con because the Missouri River is the drinking water source for the Standing Rock Sioux. If the pipe were to leak or burst, it would then leak into the water, which is not safe. Another pro of the Dakota Access Pipeline is that the transport of oil through the pipeline is safer than transporting it on railroads or in trucks. Our last con is that the government didn't include the Standing Rock Sioux during the permitting process. The government is required to include the Standing Rock Sioux and other Native American tribes when they are considering building or accessing the tribe's land. I have included two videos, which we are going to watch now. The first video shows the pro argument of the Dakota Access Pipeline. And the second video will show the con argument of the Dakota Access Pipeline. My name is Glenn Emery. I am the Vice President of Commercial Operations for Energy Transfer. The current capacity of the Dakota Access Pipeline is 570,000 barrels per day today, and we will be able to optimize the system and be able to transport up to 1.1 million barrels per day in the future. To do this, we will add horsepower along the pipeline system at existing and new pump stations. And the nice part about it is, is there will be no new mainline construction. This is adding three midpoint pump stations onto a system that already exists. It's already fully permitted. 
and it's a very simple process. The sales tax revenue generated from the optimization project can be used to support the local schools, emergency services, hospitals, and much more in the local communities, and also can increase the, the potential of jobs. We will continue to work closely with local, state, and federal authorities to ensure the compliance of the pipeline system, as well as add value to the local communities into the future. The Dakota Access Pipeline has already shown its value in being able to transport the volume and, and increase the, the national security related to the production out of that basin. And the optimization just continues to, to drive that energy security for the national interest, both at the state level and national level. Now we will watch a video which supports the con argument of the Dakota Access Pipeline. We're making history right now. This is a historical moment that people are gonna remember for the rest of their lives. The pipeline was initially supposed to be built in Bismarck, North Dakota. And those people said, no, we don't want this pipeline because it's going to ruin our water. So then they moved it down here to the reservation. Since we're downstream, it'll hit us right away. This is impacting me. This is impacting my life. We're only here today to protect this land because our ancestors, they fought for this land. the United States have been coming to this camp. We used to be enemies, some of the tribes. To see everyone coming together despite past conflicts, it's so beautiful. We've all been praying together and eating together, and it's like we are all one big family and we're in this together. I think that's what motivates me the most is to see how many people care. Like, I can't even stress that enough. It's so awesome. I want everyone to know that this isn't just for us. This is a wake up call to everyone. Everything needs water to live. I want everyone to not be embarrassed to come out here and just to help. Anything you can do is so helpful and it means so much. Thank you. So who does the Dakota Access Pipeline affect? Well, first it affects the economy. The economy is the system of how money is used and made within our communities. We are part of the economy. So by creating the D Dakota Access Pipeline, this creates jobs. And that is a positive for our economy. Another group that this affects is the Standing Rock Sioux. As I mentioned before, this directly affects them because the pipeline would go beneath their water source. So if there were to be an oil spill or a leak, this would go directly into one of their resources that they need for daily life. Our last group that this could affect is the wildlife within these areas. Because of the construction and building of the pipeline, this could force animals to move from their homes. But also, again, if there is a leak or if the pipeline bursts, this would then flow into the soil beneath the earth. It would flow into the water and poison it. And that would ruin the food and water supply for these animals and could potentially kill them. We Are Water Protectors is a wonderful picture book by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad. This book is about a young Native American girl who shares her story 
about the fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline and how it affected her tribe and the animals within her homeland. I love this book because at the end, there are several pages that provide information and background about the Dakota Access Pipeline, their communities, and the tribes. My favorite part of the book is at the end, there is a pledge that you can say and take to protect our earth and protect our water. I have included a read aloud for We Are Water Protectors. I'm not going to play this right now, but if you would like to go back and listen to it, the presentation will be posted on our class webpage. Lastly, these are the resources that I used to create our lesson today. It, like I said, if you go back on our class webpage, this presentation will be on there and you can go into the presentation and click these links to read more about the Dakota Access Pipeline. Thank you for watching today and don't forget to include your thoughts on this lesson within the Google form. I will also attach the videos that we watched and the presentation to the Google form in case you need to look back at it when you are filling out the questions. I hope you all have a wonderful day today.